Hey everyone, it's Melanie of Art Studio 320 and this week's project is a six drawer dresser. I'm very excited to do a dresser again. You can see it's missing some hardware so we're going to have to get some hardware for that and I think we're going to have a little fun with this. We're going to do some painting and a little bit of staining. So stick around. <laughs> This bottle is an old bottle. It actually has just vinegar and water in it. One part vinegar, one part water. I have found that is the easiest and best way to clean your piece of furniture, nothing fancy. Five drawers, five drawers, not six. That's one drawer, one drawer. Gets me every time. I actually could have used this hardware again, but I would have had to change out the two top drawers. So I decided to just buy all new hardware. This piece was solid maple and I didn't have to worry about sanding through a veneer. It was really nice because it took a lot of sanding, but so smooth when you're finished. <laughs> update I've decided to use coal black by fusion I'm not painting the whole thing I'm going to stain the drawers and I'm going to paint around the edges here did a good job sanding <laughs> so I'm going to stain the fronts here and then I'm going to paint around the edges which means for the frame I'm going to stain the top. As far as I know, it's looking pretty good. I think I might paint this, a little trim around. Then I thought I was gonna paint this, but with the two top drawers, I'm going to paint completely just to break it up a little bit. And I think what I'm gonna do is stain the framing around the drawers because on all the rest of the drawers, I'm going to be painting that edge, which means that edge will be black and it would be interesting to have this be stained so you'll have that contrast. And I think what I'll do is paint this. So this will be stained, this will be painted. And I'll just paint that too. And the bottom, I think I'm going to stain. Let's see how it goes. Let's see if it actually works out that way. This top took forever to sand. I'm only showing a small part of it. Since I'm painting just the edge of these drawers, I wanted to make sure that I didn't get paint on the top. Now I could have sanded it off and did have to sand a little bit when I was finished, but it's so much easier when you put painter's tape on the top. Just like the drawers, I wanted to paint the edges here, but I needed to get a scuffed surface and I just decided to really sand it like crazy. It took a while, but it worked nicely and I got a nice smooth finish. And speaking of smooth, I used finishing pads on the painted surfaces and they are just very fine. The last one I use is kind of like leather. Uh, there really isn't much grit to it, but it's nice to buff it out, especially on black because it shows everything. When you're painting right on the edge of something, a lot of times you can get drips and not even realize it. So what I do is I just kind of take my fingers and run them all along underneath just to make sure I catch any kind of drip so I don't have to deal with that.
because I decided to stain the frame of the dresser, I needed to really sand it well. So I had to take the time. I took a 60 grit that I use on my orbital sander and really got into those corners. I didn't want any spots where the stain wasn't going to take to the wood. Tack cloths are your best friend. Buy a lot of them because you really need them after you sand. There's just so much dust and that's the best way to get it off. I'm taping off all of the areas that I don't want painted because there's edges I'm going to paint and I don't want the top to get painted and I don't want the frame to get painted. And again, painter's tape is your best friend. You really need it when you're painting small areas especially. I decided to paint the base because it just didn't make sense not to. Because all of the front was going to be stained, I thought it would be a nice contrast and tie the piece all together. After I was all finished scuffing the sides, I did go back and use my plastic wood X, my wood filler, to fill in some of the gouges that I found on the sides. There were nothing I couldn't repair. I just needed to take the time and fix the bottom, the legs, and the sides. And once I put that plastic wood X on, it was perfect. I have found these little meat trays to be very useful for just using my little roller. I know it's not the best way to do it, but I've made it work and it's cheaper. I can reuse them usually. And of course, just in general, using a roller on big areas just makes a lot of sense. You get a nicer finish and it's a little bit more uniformed instead of using a brush. Now you could spray it, but in this case, I wanted to use a roller. The first stain color I'm using here is called Light Walnut. And I don't know if it was the time of day or if it was just my mood, but I just felt like I didn't like it. It wasn't sitting well with me. And normally I don't have issues with stain. I pick a color, I like it, I have an idea in mind, but I wanted something that looked mid-century modern and I wanted it to look kind of reddish like teak wood, but more on that later. One of my favorite things to do is take off painter's tape. <laughs> You'll see me kind of going back with my fingernail. Sometimes you have a little bleed through from the tape and that's no big deal. Don't freak out. You could either sand it or just lightly scrape it off if it's been the same day that you painted it. If it's been a few days, it might be a little bit more difficult, but it shouldn't be something you can't fix. after sanding off the stain, oh, we're going for the second round. This is red mahogany and as I'm putting it on, I'm realizing I don't like the way it looks. The wood isn't taking the stain very well and I ended up putting it on and waiting till it dried and then I had to go back and sand it off again. And one of the things I think that might have happened is when I was sanding off the, the stain previously, I don't know what happened, but there were some swirlies, which means there were just little spirals that come from your sandpaper, your um, orbital sander usually. And sometimes something gets stuck on your sandpaper I'm really not quite sure because I looked and I didn't see anything and oh, it always baffles me. But it could be because 
the wood is softer and a little bit more sensitive. Fusion Mineral Paint is a great paint because one of the reasons is because you only need two coats. I rarely need more than two coats. And the best part is it has top coat built in and it's very easy to work with. You need your paint brushes and your rollers over and over again, but not all at once. So you need to find a way to keep them wet. And this is how I do it. I put them in a Ziploc bag of some kind. And if you order a lot of hardware from Amazon, you will find that you have plenty of those bags around that you can reuse. The stain that I was trying to get off this time was stubborn so I briefly put on there an 80 grit and that was a bad idea on soft wood. I ended up doing more damage and then having to repair all of the little swirlies <laughs> before I could go on. This is my third attempt. This is nutmeg and while it didn't look bad I still wasn't satisfied. Oh. Sometimes, you know, it just creatively, I get stumped. And this was one of those times. I'm using a 120 sandpaper that I normally put on my orbital sander because I'm quickly learning that with softer woods, you don't want to ever use anything more than a 120, like an 80 grit or a 60 grit, because the wood is just too soft and anything that catches on that sandpaper is going to grind right into your wood. Now that's my theory right now. I will get back to you. And I've been doing this for a little while now and I don't know, I've had a lot of trouble with this particular wood. I don't usually have this much trouble. I also found that the stain was not taking to the wood very well, or the wood wasn't taking the stain very well. And here I'm sanding a bit more because to the right there you can see I put the stain on and you can still see that spot where the hardware was. Once again, I don't usually have this problem because the stain usually fills that in and if it's lighter and you're using something darker, it shouldn't be a problem, but it was a problem. So I had to go back and sand the drawers until it was acceptable enough. This stain is provincial and chestnut, and these are the final stains. I used them both. I put on the chestnut first. It was super red, so I used the provincial to tone it down just a tad, and I think the results were pretty darn good. I'm using some gilding wax in gold by Dixie Bell on this metal that was on the bottom of the legs. It was pretty beat up and in order to get it off, I would have to pop out a couple of little nails and it was very iffy if I could get it back on. So I decided to leave it on and just use the gilding wax and cleaned it up really nice and it looks great. Once it dries and cures, it'll be perfectly fine. I had a few spots on the top that I needed to sand the paint off of that the tape didn't quite cover, and then I could stain the top. This hardware I really love. I've been wanting to buy hardware like this for a while, and I'm touching up the drawers with my finishing pads, and then I'm going to put on the hardware. I'm trying to get in the habit of cleaning the drawers really well at the end and then putting some Big Mama's Butter on it. 
here it is dixie bells big mama's butter it is so great for your drawers they especially if they're really old and thirsty and you just apply it it's really great on the drawers on the outside so that they slide in and out better and it smells really good i use the orange grove scent and ooh, it smells so good phil always makes a comment he loves that smell <laughs> it's really kind of cute well this went way better than i thought it was going to go I, I should say the results are way better than i thought they were going to be i was getting a little worried i could not make up my mind about a color stain i ended up using chestnut and provincial by virethane and i wasn't sure after trying three or four different colors before this combination and just didn't like the results now part of that was the fact that this is maple maple is a soft wood like pine and therefore behaves very similarly to pine and that it doesn't take stain very well sometimes it can be very blotchy and i did have those results on the top i may go back and sand this down again I may paint the top. I do not like how it looks. If I can get the top to where I like it, yes, I will keep it stained, but I'm having my doubts and it's really about the wood. It's really not the stain, it's not the color. The color is fine, it's just blotchy. I should have used a wood conditioner before I started staining. I've had mixed results with wood conditioner. Sometimes it works. I don't see a huge difference, but it probably would have been a good idea to do anyway. It may have limited the frustration <laughs> that I had with this wood. So I will be very conscious of that on my next project I come across that happens to be maple. Thank you for being here. Good luck on your next project, and I'll see you next time. You can do it. If I got every word perfectly weighted on a thin piece of paper, would it make any difference? Would it change for the better if I wrote you a poem, if I posted a letter? Thanks for watching my video. You can find more videos just like this on my YouTube channel. And don't forget to subscribe.